everyone okay? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. Do I have any laser pointers on me? Any red beams on my chest? Am I okay? Because uh, it's a dangerous time right now for influencers, all right? And uh, as much as it sort of feels weird to say this, I kind of, I guess at this point, I kind of fancy myself a influencer on YouTube to some degree, although it's really bizarre. I mean, it's kind of a stupid word to use, but it is the case that I am an influencer. Luckily for me, I was not in Chicago. So for now, my life is okay. But that's not the same to say for a lot of people out there in the comic book community, because we have to talk about this controversy coming out of C2E2 with the Black Flag comics, Clayton Crane, Ultimate Fallout 4, Acetate variant cover. Ooh, that's a, that's a long headline. Well, in this video, we're gonna get into it and we're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna break it all down for you guys and I'm gonna weigh in on my thoughts to what is going on in this community. But before I get into the video, if you guys can drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, helps for the channel, doing those things, I appreciate it. But let's get into this video here today. Now, a couple of things here. I was apprehensive to make this video. I mean, usually, as you guys know, if you follow my channel, uh, typically on Mondays, we have a Go Collect Hot List to talk about. And, you know, for the most part, I wasn't gonna make a video about this, but as, you know, things got more and more uh, wild and crazy over the course of the weekend, I felt like, uh, you know, I probably needed to weigh in to a certain degree. But in truth, for me, this story, this thing that's happening, feels very, 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 very small, if I'm being honest. It feels so, so, so infinitesimally small that I don't know if it's necessarily worth discussing. But with that being said, there are so many moving parts to it involving CGC and Marvel and whatnot that it did feel like perhaps we can broaden the conversation to come up with some learned things that we can all take away as a community together. And maybe you guys can get some value out of this video here today. So we're gonna talk about it. Now, the other disclaimer I gotta do is that, you know, this is all hearsay. I'm going to explain to you the situation as best I understand it. Now, there's been a lot of great content already put out there by Bronze Age Nerd, White Shadow, um, Brian McClay, the team over there. And I will put links into the description of their videos and you guys can go watch those and get their takes and understand how I was able to kind of suss out everything that is going on in this situation. But I will do my best to report to you guys how I see the whole situation playing out, just so you guys can understand, you can get the TLDR. Uh, at times, I will weigh in with my opinions. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'll let you guys decide what you think should or should not have been done. All right, let's get into this here today. Of course, over the weekend, we had the event known as C2E2. Now, if you're already playing catch up, C2E2 is a comic book show that takes place in Chicago, one of the big shows uh, in all of the comic book shows. And there was a specific retailer at that con otherwise known as Black Flag Comics. Now, as far as I understand, Black Flag Comics, big, bigger retailer. They make a lot of kind of exclusive variant cool stuff. They do a lot of uh, work in the community. A lot of people have talked about how uh, they make cool products and a lot of people enjoy them. They have a relationship with Clayton Crane, who of course is a fantastic artist uh, out there in the market right now. And so they do a lot of work with him. So they had had this comic book, uh, Ultimate Fallout 4, which is a facsimile, a reprint of Ultimate Fallout. And they had made a Clayton Crane uh, retail cover for a show some weeks back. As you can see, this was a book that was made 48 weeks ago, according to their Instagram on September 2nd of 2021. So they had this particular book at the time, they sold it, people enjoyed it for what it was, cool cover, yada, yada, yada. Now, my suspicion is that, you know, the comic book that is in controversy in question was actually made around the same time as well, and they have been sitting on it for many, many, many months. But, you know, we flash forward, we go to C2E2, and now they come out with a new retail C2E2 exclusive, which is basically the same book, Ultimate Fall of Four, Spider-Man No More, uh, facsimile with Clayton Crane's, you know, cover art on it, but they add an acetate cover 
to it. And for those who don't know, you know, acetate is this, you know, piece of plastic right here. You can put it around stuff. You, you fold it over the comic book and you can basically make a new cover. So as you can see here, shout out to comic man, Andy, good dude to the community. As you can see here uh, on the acetate cover, they were able to add this USA stamp. They add the flag right here. Uh, in fact, Miles Morales is actually now holding an American flag on the acetate cover. So on the actual plastic that goes over top of the book, they're able to add these you know, unique features, which basically makes what was an old book right here into a new book right here. And they're able to call this sort of the C2E2 con exclusive. And everybody went nuts for this book. Everybody was buying it up in the market. You can see right now on eBay, look at these you know, list prices, $400, bids are 220, bids are 204. So this was a book that was extremely, extremely hot coming off of the weekend. And you know, the acetate cover, I guess people really like it. People really like Miles Morales. Here is the back of it right here, Infinite Black Publishing. In God we entrust, in, in God we entrust. In God we entrust America. In God we trust. In God we entrust. In God we entrust. You know, there's spelling mistakes on this thing. So, you know, overall, it's a very, very cool book. So much so that even before The weekend was around, this book was already moving in the market, which, you know, that's where it starts to get a little bit weird. So in case you guys don't know CBSI, they always put out their hot 10 list. Shout out to Ben Stein and the team over there. Ben Stein always does the legwork. He goes through sold listings and Ebays and all this stuff. And he's looking for books that are being sold. And number two on the list this week, which is a list that comes out on Fridays, which is the same day as the start of C2E2, this book was already in the number two slot. So it sort of begs the question, how can this con exclusive be coming out at C2E2, it's a drop that is like very unknown, which typically speaking, con exclusives kind of act this way, right? Where it's like you get the con and then, you know, maybe a day before the show or two days before the show, the retailer might say, oh, check out our con exclusive or Clayton Crane might come out and say, hey, check out my con exclusive, see you at C2E2. But already before the con was actually going on, this book was already top in the charts on some kind of list. So there were some pre-sales going on. Now, I don't really know what's going on with that. I don't really know all of the numbers and where they've got their numbers and what that means for the actual figures, but it does go to show that there was some strange things that this book was already moving in the market before we actually got the show. I don't know what that means. Again, you guys can decide what you think that that means. Now, some of the other things that I think were interesting with this is that Black Flag Comics were actually able to get CGC to grade a few of their copies. And so people were really excited because this was actually also a graded book. And not only did they get a few 9.8s, but they actually got a 9.9 .9, and they even got a 10.0, an official 10.0 from CGC blue label for this particular comic book. And that's another one of those things where it's like, wow, they got a 10.0 for a comic book that was printed in September of 2021 that had an acetate cover put over top of it. I mean, did Clayton Crane himself sit at the desk with the CGC grader and manually put on the acetate cover in order to get that 10.0? I don't know how you get a 10.0, but hey, they actually got it. So a lot of exciting things in the market. You know, we got this hot cover book coming out, C2E2. There's only 750 printed, so really low print run. And everybody is like, oh, this is the book of the show. This is the book of the show. Now, there are some other factors here. They say that it was only a 750 print run, but, you know, if people know, when you make retail variants, Marvel always demands that you make 3,000 in order to actually, at minimum, get a retail printed, which is why I'm already talking about how, you know, you can tell that when they made that original one back in September, they probably set 750 aside. Maybe they had this idea already that they were going to add these acetate covers later on, or maybe they did them at the time, or whatever the case was. Um, but this is not necessarily a print run individual from that of the previous version. So there, the people felt like there was already some weird stuff going on. Now, again, I don't really care. I mean, does that really matter that they took 750 and they made the acetate cover versions of them? It's up to you guys to decide. But there were some lack of transparency in how Black Flag was putting out this information. And of course they're doing it. They're, they're a business. They're creating the hype for their particular comic book. So that's kind of how it unfolded. Now, you got this hot book, 
you got it at C2E2. There's a lot of things going on with this. And so obviously people want to get their hands on a copy. So everybody shows up to the show and everybody waits in line Friday morning, you know, bright and early, hoping to get their hands on the, what presumably will be the hottest book of the show. And that's where the first sort of negative PR controversy comes out, right? This, this lineup, people waiting in line for their book and influencers getting special treatment with the line. So again, as far as I can explain to you guys, as far as I understand the story, doors open at 10. People are already waiting in line pre, pre-show, pre which goes to show that you know everybody is using their influence at that point because people are already in line before the doors even open. So if you're already inside C2E2 before the doors even open, you are already above that of the general public. But people are waiting in line, Black Flag gets there at 10 a.m. They start to, you know, fulfill orders. There are some other, uh, you know, videos and accounts and stuff. Like I mentioned earlier, White Shadow talks about his experience in line. I highly recommend you go check it out. He did a great job breaking it down. And as people are waiting in line and things are starting to get longer and longer and longer, they start to realize that certain people of influence are able to go to the front of the line, cut the line, and presumably start to pick up massive amounts of this book, right? They're walking away with short boxes. Apparently that was the account. And a lot of people felt like that that was really unfair, that these influencers were getting special treatment and then going over to Whatnot and their various you know, selling channels and flipping the books for 3X the profit. Now, let's break this out first, okay? Let's talk about specifically the line aspect before we move on to the rest of the story. Because we gotta talk about this line aspect because I feel like this is gonna be one of the points where people really laser focus on the line aspect. And ultimately, it's not that important. It, it really isn't. The, the, the big stories are gonna come with CGC and Marvel and that stuff later on in the video. That's really the important stuff that we have to talk about. But here's the deal, guys, with lines. Here's the deal. If you're an influencer or you're not an influencer, or you're a person of influence, or you have connections, or you have a network, or you have the ability to get something that you want for a better deal uh, at a faster rate, or you're able to get into a thing, book a restaurant reservation because you know the chef, uh, get into a club because you know the party promoter, uh, you know, get uh, box seats at your favorite sports team's uh, you know, championship game because you happen to work at the company that owns the box seats. I mean, whatever the case is, this is how the world works, right guys? Like when you have access and when you have a network, you are able to cut the line. So yes, does it feel bad? Absolutely, you know, but at the same time, what do you expect? Do you expect anything else? If Black Flag is inviting people to grab 100 copies, then that's on Black Flag. That's how they decide to do business. They see this person as someone who's going to hype up awareness for their book, and they're thinking to themselves, yeah, that's a good thing. I wanna sell all my copies. And if that influencer person wants to take that book and flip it onto the market, they're gonna do that. You know, they, they just are. I'm not saying if it's right or wrong, I'm just saying this is what it is. People are going to do what they have the ability to do. So I don't think there's any need to get angry over that. The question is this, should Black Flag, as a retailer selling their product, should they do that? Should they set limits? Now this goes into the whole like dirty flippers and LCSs and should you as an LCS or a business have a only one cover purchase uh, per you know new comic book day or whatever the, the rules are, right? This is the thing that you know a lot of LCSs have to decide. There are LCSs out there that allow people to walk in, grab the entire new comic of the hot book, whatever it is that week, and buy all you know 50 copies that that store has. Now, do you think that they should do that? I personally, if I was running an LCS, I personally would not do that because yes, I get to sell all my books and that is the goal to sell all your books, but now I'm only selling to one customer. I would rather sell to 50 different customers of the 50 different books that I have. That's me personally. Again, I have not run a retail store. Maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but it does seem like Black Flag should probably have put a cap on the amount of books that people are gonna buy. So 
what ends up happening is a lot of influencer people are buying a lot of this book. The line is getting, you know, really, really long. A lot of people were not able to get the book that they wanted. Now, again, this also goes into a fact of like, okay, how many of the people that did not get the book simply wanted the book because they were collecting? How many people were upset that they didn't get the book because they themselves also wanted to flip it onto the market? Again, I'll let you guys decide on you know what the breakdown percentage of that is. But a lot of people were not able to get it. Uh, eventually, there was only like one short box left of this book for a lot of people in line. And then Black Flag at that time decided to actually jack their prices. It was an $85 book at the start of the day. You know, I think 40 minutes into the selling of it, they had one box left and they raised their price to $100 and then put a two, two per customer cap on it after all these influencers walked away with the book. Now, that is a problem. In my personal opinion, again, this is capitalism, black flag. They can do whatever they want. They can sell all the books they want. They can literally be like a diamond distribution and just sell in bulk if that's how they want to do it, if that's how they want to run their business. Again, I will reference the thing I just said where it's like, I don't know why you would want to sell to one customer versus say create new customers. But again, I don't run the business. So that's what, if they want to do that, they want to do that. But to have your own retail book at $85 a pop and then know that your book is selling like hotcakes and instead of being excited about the fact that you're going to sell out, you actually decide to raise your prices. I mean, this is already bad. Right When LCS is, this is already a problem. When, when there's a one in 50 variant or a one in 25 variant that comes out that week that you know some LCS is jacking up the price because they can see that it's the hot book or they take it out of someone's pull box because they know that it's the hot book and they wanna actually sell it or whatever the case. This is already a problem in that level. But, but you're, you're applying those types of unscrupulous practices into a book that is your retail book your retail book, you're raising the price on your retail book because you know that it's hot in the market. That feels bad, right? I'll say this. You can totally do that. It's up to you to totally do that. And again, everyone can do whatever they want in this situation. But what do you expect people to feel like when that happens? It's going to feel bad. And certainly that is probably the flame that you know, kind of ignited the fire in this sort of situation, creating all this negative PR in the market. Now, once there was all this negative PR and people were complaining and up in arms and people were posting and comments were being deleted and, and uh, threads were being locked and all of this stuff occurring on social media, Black Flag, as far as I understand, the owner of the company put out a Facebook video and tried to share his perspective on what he felt like went down. He kind of went into a hole like, hey, I'm a business, I gotta sell my books. Again, totally understandable. He claims that some of these influencer people had pre-ordered this book. There might be some discrepancy in those stories of what a pre-order actually is versus potentially a, hey, can you save me some books? Uh, so again, I don't really know that whole side of things, but that is apparently what happened. And then everything goes crazy. And now this Clayton Crane book becomes totally toxic in the community. And you have people on whatnot that are trying to sell it. You have people in the comments talking about how, oh, how many copies do you own? Did you buy a short box of it? And there's just a lot of animosity overall. And in my opinion, I think this all comes down to how Black Flag wanted to distribute their comic book. I think that all of this could have been avoided if they did a two per customer type of situation or whatever, a five per customer, or hell, at least if they were going to give a short box to some influencers, you probably shouldn't have done it at the front of the line with, you know, whatever, 40, 50 other people to see them do that, right? It just feels bad. Again, you can do what you want, but it feels bad and people are gonna feel bad about it. Now, all of this aside, let's call a spade a spade here, right? Where why do we think that people even want this book? Like what is causing all of this demand, right? Where I think a lot of people wanna buy multiple copies because they can see that right away they can flip this on whatnot for 2X, 3X or whatever, right? This is causing a lot of this demand. Like what is actually causing this demand? And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, they claim that it is a low print count at 750. I have no reason to not believe that. I can totally believe that there's only 750 copies, although we now know that it was the cover added over top of the previous batch of books that they had created. Um, and 
People just want this thing because the expectation is that maybe this is going to be a con book that is so exclusive that it's going to go up in value in the future. Now, let's table this conversation for a little bit and let's talk about con exclusives for a second. Here's the deal, guys. I'm not saying it's impossible that a con exclusive can't take you to the moon, but the vast majority of con exclusives will never get to the moon, all right? They just won't. And unless your con exclusive has J. Scott Campbell drawing Psylocke, you know, in a bikini on the cover, your book is probably not going to go up in value six months from now. People are already going to forget your book. And Miles Morales, maybe it's a cool cover if you're into that, but he's not wearing a bikini. And I promise you that two years from now, this book will not be nearly the price that it pretends it wants to be. So I think I've kind of laid out the whole foundation of the story. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that gives you context into what is going on here in the market. And now we have to talk about some of the bigger entities that sort of exist around this. And that's specifically what not CGC and Marvel. Now, Marvel Comics, as I understand them, when they approve of, oh, excuse me, as they do retail variants, they of course have to approve that these retail variants are actually a thing. There are some channels that you have to go through to make sure that Marvel actually approves your book. Otherwise, I can just take you know any book off the shelf and make my own cover, and that would sort of be a bootleg, right? Like, I mean, we can't just make a Swagglehaus you know cover book. We have to actually go through the Marvel channels to say, hey, I'm a legitimate retail store. I would like to print over a facsimile of Ultimate Fallout 4 and make this cover. Bronze Age Nerd apparently has a contact with Marvel comic books, and they said that they were unaware of this particular comic book. So kind of brings into question. All right, well, Marvel did not necessarily approve of the acetate cover process, but I think the loophole, as we sort of can now understand it, is that, well, Marvel approved the original Clayton Crane thing, they just probably weren't privy to this specific acetate thing that they added after the fact. So that's Marvel's you know, involvement in it. We'll see if they actually care. Honestly, I don't think that we're ever going to hear from Marvel because why would they actually care about a book that has 750 copies out there in the market? They have way bigger fish to fry. Now, let's talk about Whatnot because a lot of these influencers were selling their books on Whatnot and immediately flipping. Does Whatnot have any responsibility about some of the unscrupulous practices with this book? Probably not. Probably not. Because they're just a service that is providing, you know, some people a chance to sell some of those books. Now you can make the argument that these acetate covers are bootleg copies because they weren't officially approved by Marvel. Therefore, on Whatnot, you cannot be selling bootleg copies. Now, if that actually tends to be true, then maybe Whatnot will say, hey, you can't sell that book. But until that is actually the case, Whatnot is going to have no involvement in this. So I don't know, you know, what you can say about Whatnot other than, you know, it looks bad that the people who kind of rep the brand of Whatnot a lot were selling this book on their platform. And that, you know, is sort of a guilty by association situation. I don't know what you want to say about Whatnot. Now, the last entity we have to talk about is CGC. And this is the one that gets so weird. But CGC slabbed a bunch of these books and put blue labels on them. And when they slab these books and put blue labels on them, at this point, that kind of signifies to the community that CGC is giving this their stamp of approval, which ultimately legitimizes the book. It really does. That's part of the machine that makes this book desired in the market is that CGC is giving their stamp of approval. If this is something that an acetate cover was added after the fact, and now we have to introduce the sort of big elephant in the room. The acetate cover was in fact added after the fact. In fact, if you are somebody who has this book, one of the 750, you would know that the acetate cover has its own staples onto the book, which means that this was something that was made after the fact. Now I can understand if the process was print 3000 copies and then run it back through the machine slap on the acetate cover for 750. That's probably what the process was, but then it sort of just gets into this whole like, but then how do you have four staples on a comic book 
And then how do you have four staples on a comic book for a CGC 9.9? How do you have four staples on a comic book for a CGC 10.0? Now, it might be a factory error to have two extra staples on a comic book, but a 10.0, you can have factory errors on a 10.0. That's the part I think is really questionable with CGC. How does this book actually get a 10.0? Is this book even real? Does Marvel even approve of this book? These are all the questions that people are wondering in the community. And that is ultimately kind of where I see the big problem with this issue is, and that's really the validation of CGC. Now, here's also the problem. We often look to CGC to be some governing body of the comic book collecting hobby. But in reality, CGC provides a service and they're a business and they wanna make money. So do they need to be like some sanctimonious entity saying, we don't approve of this, blah, 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 blah. No, for them, it's like, oh, you wanna slab 50 of these books? All right, cool, 50 times 25. You guys do the math, you know, a few, few grand, and uh, there you go, we're gonna print this book. Cool, put that few grand in the, in the bank. That's how they, they operate. Now, they have to protect their brand, but I really just don't think that in the grand scheme of things, they're so worried about their brand being ruined on what is seemingly a no big deal retail, you know, con exclusive. I think ultimately for me, as I think about this, I feel like there's a lot of moving parts and there are a lot of things I think were done poorly and decisions were made um, poorly by certain people involved in this situation. I don't necessarily have a problem with people wanting to flip books. It's this, the reality. I just, I don't have a problem with people wanting to flip, flip books. I do think that businesses should probably set, you know, max, maximum purchases on their, you know, retail exclusives or, or in-store items or whatever the case is in order to prevent, you know, these types of things from happening. I mean, otherwise, what's the point? right? Why do you want to be an LCS and just cater to a bunch of whales who come in to buy all your inventory and then flip it on the market? Because at that point, it's like, why even have a store? I mean, if you can already just, you know, sell off your entire thing to a bunch of whales, then just do that. Also, at the end of the day, guys, when we talk about influencers and things like that, yeah, influencers have influence. Oh my God. What a crazy concept, right? Influencers have influence and they're gonna talk about maybe certain books or they're gonna sell certain books. And if people out there in the market decide to pay whatever they wanna pay for the prices of those books, then that's what they're gonna do. It's up to you to decide if this is something that you wanna buy. Everybody out there in the world is trying to sell you something. Even I'm trying to sell you something here on this YouTube channel right now. I don't know what I'm selling you yet. I will eventually sell you something. Maybe I'll make a t-shirt that says, Swagglehaas, what is the significance of this? All right? And then when that happens, I'm gonna say, hey guys, you should buy this. This is the greatest t-shirt, it's the most comfortable thing, it fits perfectly to my body. I will eventually sell you something. The question you have to ask yourself is, is the thing that you are being sold providing value in your life? Is this a book that you feel like you want to own? If the book is worth $300 to you, then buy the book. If you think this is stupid, then don't buy the book. And especially don't buy the book from the people that you're upset about who are selling the book. Let them have a hundred copies sitting in dusty short boxes in their comic book room. Just let them have it. Don't buy it, walk away. You don't need to yell at anyone. You don't need to throw insults. You don't need to like, cause chaos in your life. At the end of the day, guys, I feel like just vote with your wallet. If you don't like the people in their business practice, business practices, then don't support their business. And then walk away after that. Who cares? Anyways, that's all I've got for this video. Hopefully that broke down the situation for you guys. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of clarity on what happened. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm a little bit scared to read them. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, be kind, go collect video tomorrow, and I'll see you in the next video.